A Summary of Disunited Nations, written by Peter Zion. In this book, Peter analyzes the geopolitical patterns of superpowers, all to predict the future for a world without an American-led order. From Bretton Woods, Washington's leaders proposed a strategic agreement to anyone who would join their alliance. In exchange, they were guaranteed unfettered access to free trade, security, economies of scale, and globalism. This meant that resource-poor empires like Germany could have access to any supply chain or market, and civilizations like China, with poor internal geographies that had once made them prey to naval powers, were assured protection. Countries the world over would have access to finances, resources, technology, and markets that they didn't have to secure themselves. However, that isn't just coming to an end. It has already ended. Since the 1920s, the United States has decreased troop commitments, cut down on naval deployments, and shifted alliance priorities. This downsizing of global overwatch wasn't planned, but remains a trend of leadership. The order was never about economics, in the US's view, despite being a bonus. The American mainland remains the least entangled. Strong borders means it faces no external threats. A modern agricultural and energy sector means it doesn't need global supply chains. The strongest financial sector means it doesn't need much in the way of forward investment. The global order was always a security concern, and now that's just shifted. To illustrate the effects of what has been lost, this is Mexico. A large number of children at the bottom means a healthy group of future workers and customers. The topmost portion are those of retiring age. This is your grandparents who were once the most skilled producers but are no longer able to contribute. Countries with demographics like these, consumption-led, are ideal partners for the USA. Americans like to focus on high-end production and design, the value-added work that leads to outsourcing to countries with large, young, semi-skilled populations. Places like these should expect even to have leverage at the negotiation table, whilst demographics like these are no more than America's economic competitors. In a world where security is no longer free, these countries can expect much less kind terms and conditions when it comes to negotiation. Thanks to global supply chains, many countries have experienced a boom in life expectancies and foreign investment, which have led to demographic surge. Keyword, has. Now many nations have aged to what can only be described as demographic collapse. However, after they face the threat of food insecurity, energy shortages, and imminent disconnection from global capital, people won't be starving in silence. Even if the criteria for starvation is a breakdown of partnership with the United States, Peter doesn't see any hope for a deal with the Chinese. Moreover, he describes their economic miracle as, in a word, overhyped. Without protection for their shipping lanes, Chinese exports can hardly get beyond the first island chain. Without sufficiently secure bases, they can forget about extending a sphere of influence beyond their borders. Moreover, neighbors like Japan, India, Vietnam, and the Philippines means the Chinese will need to fight for every nautical mile, poor geography and being surrounded by enemies, and a massively overleveraged economy means if the Americans really wanted to watch the People's Republic implode, they would just need to go home. The demographic period doesn't forecast much success either. Thanks to the one-child policy, what was a perfect demographic structure came unraveled. There simply aren't enough people being born to replenish the number headed for retirement. The cheap labor that made China the world's factory will only become more costly, more uncompetitive. With the breakdown of bilateral relations to the rest of the world, this is fine. They can take their foreign investment elsewhere. There are plenty of Asian Pacific nations with more favorable futures. One country with a brighter future despite rapid aging and a lack of resources is Japan. To oversimplify, Japan is a leader in automation, and if anyone can out-engineer not having enough producers or consumers, it is Tokyo. Moreover, with a sufficient navy and favorable partnerships, Japan is set to come out of deglobalization stronger. Not sharing in that bright future is Brazil. Suffering from a collapsed financial system means difficulty gaining capital resources to keep your agricultural sector productive. Without good leadership, Brazil is headed for more of the same. One country that Peter outlines may be in for a shock without the global order is Russia. Russian territory is a bipolar, polar wasteland that can only be defended by expanding outwards. This expansion puts it in conflict with countries like Germany or Turkey. Struggling through sanctions, plummeting demographics, and a tough geography means that being a nuclear power isn't going to be enough to keep Moscow secure. Russia is the strongest it has been since the days of the Soviets, in part due to energy exports. Russian crude and natural gas can be produced dirt cheap, however that pales in comparison to the technological advancement in American energy production. Green tech in American urbanized territories close to the equator means solar can be put to good use. The Great Plains are as windswept as any other similar region. The American shale revolution has made the country a net oil and natural gas producer. Shale production in the US was once the most costly in the world. Getting ready to use oil from trillions of rock fragments was once seen as an unconventional 
means of production, but not anymore. Tripling oil capacity means Americans can disengage from the Saudis, Iranians, and watch as Eurasian powers compete for energy control. A byproduct of all that petroleum is pesticides, and along with fertilizers, means food security. Fertilizers, pesticides, fungicides, and herbicides make subpar agricultural land in regions like Brazil and Sub-Saharan Africa viable. These sources of crop intensity only exist because of globalization. The Mississippi Water Network overlays America's farmland. This combination means cheaper food supply than in Brazil, China, or Russia. Agriculture in the United States is largely modernized and capital intensive. Very few nations are capable of losing large segments of their supply overnight. Really the only countries with a hope of maintaining a self-sufficient agricultural sector are Argentina and France. Argentina boasts some of the greatest land wealth in the world. All it needs is a second chance at good management. France has historically been blessed with fertile lands, and without globalism, Paris has the chance it's always wanted to become the undisputed regional leader. Leadership was what created the global order and what will ultimately cause its breakdown. Not bad leadership, but uninterested leadership. American foreign policy is largely controlled by the president, and since Bush, the elder, every president has ranged from confused to outright hostile. American politics change from crisis to crisis, and the incumbent represents that. The Democrat strategy of minority mining proves slow in converting the majority of the country. Liberalism works in California, but is ineffective in Texas, which largely shares the same demographics. Civilian scrutiny and distaste for casualties means drone strikes and special operations will be the name of American war games. The contraction of global order will take place alongside American refocusing on internal and regional matters. This isn't the first time Washington has employed a policy of isolation. At the same time, one can expect a return of a kind of dollar diplomacy. This foreign policy is led by opportunist American business people. Their interests, as far as the wider world is concerned, will be American interests. Attacks on them will be attacks on the American military. Latin America knows what that's like. The majority of countries that we think will dominate the future, like Brazil, Russia, China, and Germany, are unlikely to survive. Instead, consider the future of Turkey, Japan, Argentina, and France as firmly in the position of world leaders. Countries will rise and fall, as they tend to do, but to Americans, that will not seem like their problem. A generation of people look at this collapse and thanks to the strength of their education, rationalize that there is one place where they can escape to. Inevitability dictates that this age too will cease, just as many ages before it have. History proceeds. As the world restructures and reforms, a new world order will arise.